Hey guys, this is Dow Phoenix, and this is the unboxing event I've been waiting to do. And one of my favorite franchises, starting with Demon Souls. Then we have the one that pretty much brought it to popularity, and that is Dark Souls. Yes, Dark Souls indeed. And then we have the enigmatic sequel, Dark Souls 2. And of course, the latest game, which is only loosely based on either of these, like this one is loosely based on these, and that is Bloodborne. So, other than Demon Souls, and then of course the Dark Souls 2 Collector's Edition. I've got all the other Collector's Edition. I get Metal 10s for all the other ones. Uh, so that's pretty nice. But, that's not the end of it, guys. Dark Souls 3. This is the motherfucking Collector's Edition right here. This is the most I've ever spent on a game. But I did it over like a course of like three or four months. So, it was actually pretty easy to digest whenever you prepare ahead of time. Just like you do in the game. So you have to prepare so you don't die as often. I mean, d death is inevitable, right? But, uh... You've got to prepare to keep it from happening constantly. So, this is a box. I'm going to show it to you in full frame here. Yes, it is rated M for Mature. Do not let the kids play this one. After all, they probably want to play Call of Duty or you know, something else that's kid-friendly like that. The box has a really nice matte finish to it. And I like that. I like how it feels. It's like comforting, you know. It's uh, the opposite of the Dark Souls franchise, <laughs> is, is a way to put it. So let's go ahead and open up the box here. Okay, there we go. And inside we have a book. Two game cases, which I'll get to that in a bit. And the statue. Now, I've already took the liberty of unpackaging everything, essentially, but I'm going to show on camera everything. But we're going to show the back of the box first, so you can get a preview of what is included here. Let me just fold this back a little bit. So you get a 10-inch Red Knight statue. This is a picture of the statue. It's not the actual statue. Sorry to disappoint. And then you get a cloth game map. 200-page 7-inch art book, which is the book right there, as you see there. A 7-inch metal case, because, I mean, regular cases won't do. When it comes to Dark Souls, you need a motherfucking metal case. Dark Souls 3 starter guide, soundtrack, and, of course, you get the game. Because, I mean, this collection would be shit if you didn't get the game. Or if you only did a digital code like uh, Halo 5 Guardians. But anyways, let's go ahead and take out the contents from this box. First, we shall look at the Art of the Dark Souls Trilogy book. Blank page. That's awesome art. So obviously you've got some art representative of the original Dark Souls. More Dark Souls art. I guess this key art that it references to means that it was like promotional art, uh, world. This is art of the world and so on. So let's skip ahead a bit. We get to some Dark Souls 2 action. Okay, this is still Dark Souls 1. I wonder if it could be, well, it could be mixed in. Yeah, it might be. You're not going to be disappointed in this one. Maybe in the size a little bit, but not the thickness or the content inside. So that's really good. You get a regular copy of the case, of the game, if you want that. Except it'll also say Edition Premier Jour, which the retail one that you buy in store doesn't say that, at least for the U.S. Maybe it does in Canada or something like that. So I guess that's kind of an oddity. The uh, Collector's Edition comes with uh, both the English and French on the front, whereas the standard A1 edition does not. And then we've got, of course... The metal case. Most definitely. Most definitely. So, I've already, like I said, I've already unpackaged everything. There's no shrink wrap or nothing like that because I wanted to kind of cut BS out. So, inside it contains the game and the soundtrack, but I separated them to put the game 
in the metal case, and the soundtrack is going to go in the regular case. And then here's the starter guide, and also there is a code on the starter guide for the back. I use it this to cover it instead, which is just a a thing that tells you about strategy guides. You know, it's an advertisement, right? So, is what it is. Now we'll move on to Dark Souls 3, the game case that I have set up for it. So here is the cloth game map. This one is actually pretty interesting. It's obviously not a very expensive edition or anything like that, but this takes me back to the classic games of old. Like, all the way back in, I think it was like Ultima 6 or something like that, I had a cloth map that came with that. And it wasn't even like a collector's edition. It was just standard. So I had to pay 130 bucks to have the same experience that I had paying like 30 bucks, I think, for that game. But, um... Yeah, it looks pretty nice. It's uh, just like you expect for the clock map. I guess it just shows kind of an overview of the game world. So that is pretty sweet. I'm going to go ahead and show it just a little bit closer on camera. It's definitely a cloth map. It has a good good feel. Um, nothing to go on the plane about there. And it folds up nicely. Technically, I probably wouldn't even need the packaging anymore. You could just put it neatly there. And then, of course, the game. Very important. Like I said, this collection would be a moot point without the game. So, that's all well and good. But let's go to the main event. And the reason why people buy a collector's edition in the first place. Is to get some kind of sweet swag. In this game's case, the sweet swag is a statue. So we'll go ahead and take it out of the box here. Oh, baby. That is a big motherfucking statue of the Red Knight. The Red Knight is not very often victorious because he's in Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, to reference a great movie from back in the day, you know, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I'm not going to do the undo the tape on the other side, or well, actually, there's not. Okay, well, actually, maybe there is. But. Okay, so here it is, the statue right here. Let's go ahead and remove it. And you also get two little crappy looking swords. Yeah, they're just like crappy plastic swords that you can uh, arm him with. So yeah, they're just swords, clearly. And then a assembly guide for this. So... It wants you to remove the pommels from the hilt of each scimitar before you attach them to the knight. Okay, thanks for the instructions. Okay, so here is the statue in this view right here. I'm going to do a little pan around. Yep, it is a statue. It's really got a really nice feel. It's a resin statue. Overhead shot. You know, in case you wanted to make a display where you make everything overhead like an old school RPG, this is what it would look like. Okay. And Bandai Manco Entertainment is definitely branded by them. They made it in China, of course, because everything's made in China. All right. So let's remove the uh, pommel like it's said to do. And then slide the handle. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. Here we go. And just put it down there. Okay. Looks good. Now the sword gun. Hey, you know how to do this? Like, oh, you can actually use it all. Just a guy with fists. Two swords came separately. Well, this is how you set it up, guys. This is the statue, I suppose. So, um, really cool looking. You know, obviously he's parrying there while he's following up with a counterattack with his other sword. So, yeah, this is very nice. Uh, just to bring ba everything back into the fold of what is included with this game, this collector's edition. Thanks for tuning in. Till then, Dal Phoenix out.